Hi, my name is Adrian, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the CSS property for background images. It's utilized all over the web, but not many people really take advantage of all the other properties that come along with it. We're going to take a look at things like background blend mode, which will allow us to do things like add filters to images, as well as maybe applying transitions to them on hover to allow them to zoom in a little bit. And maybe we'll also have a look at how to convert them into other things like GIFs that allow them to be animated a little bit and add a little bit of life to your hover effects. We'll also have a look at how we can combine all of these features into one whole that's greater than the sum of its parts. So if you're ready to get started and like this kind of content, hit like and hit subscribe and let's just jump right into it. So we have some code here that we created in our previous video, which you can click up at the top right corner. What we're going to do is create a background image for this item here. And we're going to also apply a blend mode so that when we transition for the hover effect, we can essentially make the background look like it's transitioning as well. So we're going to do this by defining our classes down here. We'll do section article dot image. And in here, we'll add a color. Let's add background dash color. And in this case, I might want it to be just a very light red. So maybe a 2.5%, 25 percent uh, red. Next, we can define a background image. So to do that, we simply pass in background dash image, put in URL and define the URL we're using. In this case, we're just using the local path. So it'll be a dot forward slash YouTube a dash JPG. In your case, you might use a external URL or if you're browsing between paths, you can select your folder in there. Next, we'll see that the image doesn't scale properly. That's because it's just native to its current resolution. So what we'll want to do is create a background size. Let's do this here. We'll create a background size and we've got a few options. The option I usually like to do is just cover because that sort of makes sure that the background image adjusts to the height and the width of the box it's in. Some people prefer contain, but if you do contain, you have to be aware that if the image isn't big enough on its width or height, you might get some black boxes around the sides. The other option is maybe something like size by 50%. But if you do that, you can see that the image might not fit in properly and might be repeated. If we want to remove the repeats, we can do background repeat. And here we can just type in no repeat. If we do that, the background image is still in there, but it's not sized properly. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do 100% size and that'll make it nice and clear. We can also make its positioning different. We can do background position and here we can do something like top or bottom, left or right. But in our case, we're just going to do center. So it's nicely aligned. Finally, we can apply a blend mode. And in this case, we want the red color to slightly show up. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in background blend mode. And in this case, I'm going to use multiply. That's a nice, safe one to do a background color. We can see a tint of red in there and we can increase it by increasing the amount of color we're applying. In this case, I've just added 50%. So that looks all right. We might have some other styling on this button, but it gives you a general idea of what it looks like with a background image. What we want to do now is create a hover effect for it. Let's add a hover and on the image, let's change the background color. In this case, maybe we'll remove it entirely by doing 0% for the opacity. If we do that and now hover over it, we see that it loses that background color, but there's no transition. So let's add that in. We'll do transition 0.5 seconds ease on the background dash color. If we do this now and hover over it, we can see it's got a very nice hover effect where it's losing that blend mode and it looks a little bit better. That's one example of how you can use blend mode for your animations with background images. Let's create another one. Let's move this all across into its own section called and blend. Below, let's copy this article and create a new style article. And this might be zoom. 
For zoom, let's copy a couple of these styles across, but not all of them. Let's copy this image one here. And in here we'll do and zoom. For this section, we'll remove the background color entirely and the transition as well and the blend mode. So we've got just the background image there. Now, in this case, I wanted to zoom in a little bit. There's a few different ways we can do this. Let's define a hover effect. And in here, let's add the image class. For the background size, we might put it to 150 this time. If we do this and hover over, we can see that it's zooming in, but we've got no animation, so let's add that in. Zero point five second transition on ease with background dash size. If we apply this and now hover over, we can see that our image is zooming in. This is very useful, but sometimes it's even better to start off with the image zoomed in and then zoom it out slowly, maybe over two seconds. This gives it a very nice effect when you're hovering over elements and it gives them more of a natural feel like the website is actually alive rather than just static. Next up, we'll have a look at creating another effect. In this case, I want to actually make the animation of the image start moving altogether. Uh, we're gonna do this by implementing a GIF. So to create a GIF, what we do is we actually have to pass in a completely different background image. In order to do this, I've already created a couple of GIFs for these because most of these are movies with a static frame. I'm going to copy this zoom section across and I'm going to create a GIF class here. For this GIF class, the animation will actually just be changing our background image from a JPEG to a GIF. If we apply this and hover over it, we can see that when we apply the hover, it starts moving. And I think that's really cool, especially when you have videos for your content. The GIF doesn't have to be particularly large since it's just probably on a five second repeat. But this gives you a couple of examples of cool things you can do with background images for transitions. Let's create a new item here above and call this all. In here, we'll copy this GIF that we created and we'll create a new class called all. For this one, we'll have a background image that also has a blend mode, such as the RGB color we created earlier. It will also have a background blend of multiply. And then maybe its background size will also update on the hover effect and zoom in. Finally, we'll do the transition on all the elements. When we apply this and also make sure that the background color is changing its opacity, here we'll have an example of all elements combined. Now let's have a look at our end result. We'll hover over it and we can see that the animation immediately begins. The background blend slowly transitions over two seconds and the still zooms out. If we go off it, then we can see it goes back to that static frame. This is really cool, and I think it's a good example of what you can do when you apply different CSS properties to create a whole that's better than all its individual parts. Just before we finish up, I thought I'd let you know that just make sure that whenever you use any CSS property in production, it has browser support. In this case, our background blend mode isn't quite yet supported by all browsers. If we scroll down here on the Mozilla documents, we can see that unfortunately Microsoft is a little bit late to the party and their Internet Explorer and Edge browsers don't currently support it. Of course, there are other ways we can implement it, such as just doing a background color with an opacity of 50%. And while it's not the same, it's the closest we can get, at least for those browsers. Alternatively, you could always just use a image that's been photoshopped with the background blend applied, but it's really up to you. I hope this video has given you a good insight into how useful background properties for CSS can be. There's a lot more to them and I've been using them for quite a long time, but I'd love to hear how you guys use them. So leave it in the comments below. 
I've done a video on CSS properties and neomorphism up above. So if you want to see that content, please click on it. If you did like this video though, leave a like and subscribe because it lets me know what kind of content you guys want. Thanks. See ya.